In order to analyze and discuss data, it's very helpful to represent it graphically. And for this particular uh, video, we're going to refer to the spreadsheet calculations and graphing CSCS activity under general science. So if you click over on general science, you should find it over there. And when we're looking at graphs, there's many different ways to represent data, and each of them has its advantages. And in this particular activity, what we're going to be doing is clicking on this link right here, Calculation Spreadsheet Activity. So if you click on that, it's going to open up this spreadsheet. And you can see that there's many different plots here. There's pie graphs and, and column and bar and so forth. Now, your goal is to replicate these. Well, how does one replicate them? Let's go first to the pie diagram. So we're looking here for causes of death in California in the year 2000. And if I highlight the actual causes of death and then scroll over and grab the numbers for each of those, and then go up here to the, to the toolbar and say insert chart, I'm given a variety of options. I don't see any pie charts here, so I click on more, and then I'll click on the pie option, and there it is, there's the donut chart. And it looks pretty good, so I'll say insert, and it looks very similar, except the chart title is not correct. So I can click on this, title it, and now things look pretty good. When you move your cursor over an inserted graph, a little hand comes up and that's going to allow you to move it around. But oftentimes you don't want the graph on the same page as the data. Particularly if you have a tremendous amount of data, the graph may get in the way. So if you click on the little menu option over here with a little pull down, then say move to its own sheet, we can now see that this pie chart is the same as the one on the original one over here, but it's just been moved to its own uh, sheet, which we can then uh, relabel however we wish. If I click on this little arrow, again, another menu comes up. In this case, we're going to rename it and just call this Pi 2. Okay, so that's just to show that it's associated with Pi 1. Now, in this case, I don't need this, so I'm going to choose a little menu select again. In this case, I'm just going to delete the chart. It doesn't delete any of the data because it's simply a graphic representation of the data that was plotted over here. And that data is still there as you can see. Now let's go to the column uh, uh, graph. So here we're seeing that we're looking at the number of sunspots plotted as a function of year. So I'm going to actually choose from the category headers, in this case from year and sunspot, all the way down to the year and the number of sunspots there for the year 2000. And again, once that's selected, we'll go up over here to the insert chart feature. And now we have to say, okay, well, what kind of a chart do I want? And when you see a chart, it seems to be plotting year um, as well as sunspots. Well, if I look over on the start menu, maybe I need to use column A as labels. And when I do that, it says, okay, those column A's are not actual values. We're not looking at two different series of data. Uh, we're actually looking at column A as labeling this here. Now, again, if I turn that off, it's going to be plotting these things, which happen to be years, 1991, 1992, 1993, in the same way it's plotting the number of sunspots, like 26,595, um, 15,223, and so forth. So it's very important to go back over here to the Start menu and, and clean it up by saying using, use column A as labels. And now our data looks pretty good. Once again, I can title it. If I say insert, I can then click on any element and I can annotate it. So here's sunspots versus year. Again, if I want to move this to its own sheet, I select it and now I can 
move to its own sheet. And again, when we compare these two, you can see, yes, indeed, they are identical in terms of the way that they've plotted the data. Once again, I'm going to use the menu option here by collecting the arrow, and I'm going to, in this case, delete this sheet. All right, let's, let's try a bar graph. Here's a bar graph, and this one's a little bit more complex um, because there's a lot of data over here, and the question is, what data are we looking at? So if you see something like this and you try to figure out what's going on, first of all, you know, look at the title of your graph. So here it's percent composition of the earth and the crust. So some of these cells appear to be blocked. If I click on this, and it says Earth's crust, click over here, Earth's atmosphere, and so forth. So in this case, we're looking at um, the data here in, the, in um, pertaining to the Earth and to the crust and not to the atmosphere. And so you want to find the amount that's found in each of those. Well, here's a little tricky because we're we're looking at columns that are discontiguous. So sometimes it's helpful if you already have a graph to click on the graph and then click on the menu over here and go to the advanced edit. And in this case, we're going to go all the way back to the start menu, which is going to show where we got the data. And maybe a little hard to read right there, but it says it's getting it from bar and then an exclamation. That means it's actually coming from this particular uh, worksheet. And then it says, okay, go to A28 colon to A38. So that's going to be getting the range of data for the first of the series. Then it goes to bar B28 to B38 and then C28 to C38. Now, Notice that column A is used as labels. So if I cancel this out, I can see that column A was labeled. So there's your oxygen, your iron, your silicon, your magnesium, and so forth. And so this data is, is where we're getting this information to plot over here. So that's going to again, a kind of way to backwards engineer to see how things work. Now in science, many things work on a continuum. Um, in this case right here, we're looking at atmospheric ozone concentration in the Los Angeles Basin as a function of the hour of the day. So over here we have our chart, and we or I should say our, our table of data, and the first column here represents you know the hour, so we go from one o'clock all the way through to midnight. And we're looking at the ozone concentration at three locations, valley, mountain, and beach. Well, once again, let's highlight the section, including the category headers, valley, mountain, and beach. And now we're going to plot the data. And we kind of go, whoa, is that what we really want to see? Well, obviously not. Okay, we're going to click. Um, how about if we choose column A as, as labels? Once again, it sees it cleans things up. And now we can... Uh, plot the data. However, if you look at this more carefully, you're going to realize, well, it looks like it's looking great, but then it really isn't because the valley had the highest air pollution before, and now it's showing as the lowest pollution. So something's obviously awry here. So maybe we're not using the right type of a chart. So in this case, we're going to choose a line chart, and let's try a line chart, and um, we see again valley, mountain, and beach represented very differently there. So let's go back and say, how are we going to clean that data up? So uh, this is obviously <laughs> not representing what the data is. And if we look at this more carefully, we might notice that hmm, this blue object here doesn't have a title. And we have valley, mountain, and beach, which are now minimized down here. So there's four things that are being plotted rather than three. So let's go back and try this again. We're going to close out that and say, no, we don't want that. It looks like that's not representing what we want. 
Well, this time we're not going to select that first category because a line graph assumes uh, an even distribution of, of uh, timing. So like, for example, every hour. So let's just try it again. Well, this time we're going to leave off that first category. We're going to click on the Insert Chart feature once again. Still looks weird because Beach uh, appears to be the most heavily polluted. So let's go back over and now say, now we don't really want area. Let's try line. Let's try line graph. And oh, now that's starting to look better. We notice that the valley ozone concentration uh, is peaking there. Um, and uh, But the mountain and the beach are considerably lower. So if I said insert, here's the graph. And it looks similar to the one that we have right there. But the the axes don't look the same. So let's go ahead and click on the axis right there. Say time of day. And then let's click on the vertical axis over here. And we're going to click there, ozone concentration in parts per million. And you might wonder why the second one took, but the first one didn't. And the reason is because I never pressed enter in this case right here. So let's do it again and type time of day. Now press enter, which means just apply it, or you could, and that's what this is saying down here is uh, print, um, press enter to <coughs> actually apply the change. Now each element in here um, can be adjusted simply by clicking it. So if I click on the series here, and say, you know, I'd like to actually show those at, uh, what it was at specific time intervals. Click on the um, data point, and I'll just choose two point right here. And let's do the same over here and down here one more time. Click on the red and now choose the two pixel data point. Let's go ahead and move it to its own sheet. And it looks good. Looks like now we've been successful in plotting this one as well. Now, the other ones are going to be uh, achieved pretty much the same way. There's a little bit of experimentation that needs to go on with each of these. But again, the key thing is to represent your data in, uh, in columns. Each one of these up here we refer to as a category header. And over here is going to be a particular record. So for example, in this case, where we're looking at the spread of bark beetle, then everything in row one is considered a record. Everything in column um, B is considered um, the entrance into a particular field. So for example, the number of trees infected with bark beetle on the north slope. So uh, once again, to plot this, let's select the data, choose the insert chart feature, and then in this case it looks like an area graph. So let's look at our area graphs and see which one looks like it making the most sense. And indeed it looks like this is making the most sense. Only The only problem is you'll see that it's actually total in the year along with the number of trees that are infected in the north, east, south, and west slope. So uh, we don't want that, obviously. So again, if we click back on the start and say that let's use column A as labels, then once again, it's going to plot it out correctly. And now we can say, OK, that this is going to be um, year. And we can insert it right here. Double click on the horizontal axis title, type year, click on the um, left vertical axis and type your uh, number of trees infected. Now once again you notice that the number the, that the change did not occur on the horizontal axis but is occurring in the vertical and that's again because I didn't press uh, enter when I was done. So enter is typically your way to make sure that a change uh, takes place. So there we go. We have pretty much the same graph as we had before. Let's move it to its own sheet. Click move to its own sheet. And now we've been successful in an area chart. 
So experiment with these um, and make sure that you can represent your data. And sometimes the biggest challenge is simply to put your data into columns. You can do it in row and you can reverse it. So um, although it does get a little bit more confusing and so we recommend against that. But sometimes your data is going to come in in the form uh, in a form and you need to do that. And so if that happens and your data needs to be adjusted, you, you would simply um, click on the advanced edit. And then uh, you're going to you're going to change the, the way that your data is represented um, by going over to start and just saying switch the rows and columns. Now, obviously, this is an erroneous way to plot it here because these are now pl 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 uh, plotting years against slopes and so forth, which doesn't make sense. But if my data had been represented um, it, it just uh, at, at right angles to the way it currently is represented, in other words, the rows were columns and the columns were rows, then that would make, more, uh, make sense. All right, so go ahead and, and uh, work with that spreadsheet that's attached. Make sure you make a copy of it and it'll say copy of graphs up here, and then try to replicate those graphs. And if you can do that, you have a pretty good idea of how to visually represent your data.